Now we will discuss the fundamental concept of Newton's three laws of motion. Now you may remember these laws from earlier studies, but it is absolutely necessary that you understand these concepts because the entire subject of rigid body mechanics is formulated on the basis of these three laws, the validity of which is based on experimental observation. They apply to the motion of a particle as measured from a non-accelerating reference frame. So let's get started with the first law. The first law states that a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with constant velocity will remain in the state, provided that the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. So if you have a particle that is subjected to a variety of loads but is at equilibrium, which means it is at rest, or moves at a constant velocity will remain in this state provided that the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. Now in order for you to remember the three laws I suggest that you remember keywords related to each. So whenever you hear the first law you must remember these three keywords rest, constant velocity, and unbalanced force. Your particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with constant velocity will remain in the state provided that the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. As for the second law, a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force, F, experiences an acceleration, A, that is the same direction as the force and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. So whenever a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force, F, experiences an acceleration, Let's say that this is a particle and it undergoes this force. It experiences an acceleration. A, that has the same direction as the force and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. Now, if F is applied to a particle of mass m, this law may be expressed mathematically as the famous formula F equals mA. And remember that both F and A are vectors. That's why I'm putting these arrows over here. Or you can put them in bold. The third law states that the mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. So these three keywords, equal, opposite, and collinear. In other terms, you can say for every action, there is an equal and opposite and collinear as well, reaction. Newton's Law of Gravitational Attraction Shortly after formulating his three laws of motion as discussed in the previous video, Newton postulated a law governing the gravitational attraction between any two particles. Stated mathematically, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared, where F is the force of gravitation, G is the universal constant of gravitation, an empirical physical constant, Based on experimental evidence, g is equal to 66.73 times 10 to the power negative 12 meters cubed over kilograms times second squared. m1 and m2 are the masses of the particles, and r is the distance between the two particles. This law states that every point mass in the universe attracts every other point mass, and the force of gravitation is proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. According to this equation, any two particles or bodies have a mutual attractive gravitational force acting between them. In the case of a particle located at or near the surface of the Earth, however, the only gravitational force having any sizable magnitude is that between the Earth and the particle. Consequently, this force, termed the weight, will be the only gravitational force in our study of mechanics. So if you're wondering whether or not there is an attractive gravitational force between you and any other object at the surface of the Earth, the answer is yes. However, the only gravitational force having any sizable magnitude is that between the Earth and you, not between you and the other object. From this equation, we can develop an approximate expression for finding the weight W of a particle having a mass m1 equals m. If we assume the Earth to be a non-rotating sphere of constant density and having a mass m2 equals me, m Earth, then the r is the distance between the Earth's center and the particle. We have w equals g m me over r squared. Letting g equals g me over r squared 
yields W equals mg, the famous equation of weight. One important concept to keep in mind is that the weight is not the same as the mass. Weight and mass are two separate concepts. Although they're used interchangeably, in science, however, weight is a force and mass is a scalar quantity. Weight is a vector quantity. So your weight on the surface of the Earth is not the same as your weight on the surface of the, of the Moon. By comparison with F equals ma, we term g the acceleration due to gravity. Since a is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, approximately. Since it depends on R, it can be seen that the weight of a body is not an absolute quantity. Instead, its magnitude is determined from where the measurement was made, as discussed earlier. The most, in, for most engineering calculations, however, it is determined at sea level and at a latitude of 45 degrees, which is considered the standard location.